three year old boy is brought to your office by his mother, who is concerned that her child gait seems to be deteriorating and the child's medical history is significant for several sinus infections. The child's medical file does not reveal any indication that he had any difficulty walking in the past. However, as you observe the child walk right now in your clinic, you note know that his gait is distinctly ataxic. Ataxic gait, three-year-old boy. A full neurological examination reveals a decreased uh, DTRs in the both the legs. When close examination of the child's conjunctiva reveals multiple telangiectasias, and you begin to suspect that this child suffers from a condition that is ultimately fatal. So very direct case and it is ataxia telangiectasia. So ataxia telangiectasia is an autosomal recessive disorder that results in a mutation on the chromosome number, what's the chromosome number for the ataxia telangiectasia? And what is that gene? It is a mutation on the chromosome number 11 in the ATM gene, ATM. Now, do you have any idea what exactly the ATM gene is? The gene product of the ATM is mainly involved in sensing DNA that has been damaged by the radiation. What exactly, what the ATM gene will do? ATM gene is responsible for the synthesis of a product or a protein, we can say, a gene product. The gene product of the ATM gene, I'm repeating once again, the gene product of the ATM gene is involved in the process called as sensing the DNA that has been damaged by the radiation. So once there is a radiation induced DNA damage, then immediately this DNA damage is detected by the gene products which are produced by the ATM gene, then, you know, then it signals the P53 to delay the cell cycle and allow for the DNA repair, right? The gene product of the ATM gene, after detecting the DNA damage by the radiation, it signals the P53 and it asks the P53, please delay the cell cycle so that we have a time for the DNA repair. If the ATM gene is mutated, the P53 is not activated. If the P53 is not activated, the cell cycle continues without DNA repair. That is damage DNA repair mechanism cannot happen. So allowing for replication of the damage of the DNA itself, this leads to an abnormal cellular development, especially in the neurologic, vascular, as well as immune systems. So the major clinical manifestations in the ataxia telangiectasia is the neuronal, neurologic, vascular, and immune. When we are talking about the neuronal, the neurons of the cerebellum, especially of the Purkinje layer, granular layer of the cerebellum, are more commonly involved. So that's the reason cerebellum is particularly affected. And the pathological examination of the cerebellum reveals loss of Purkinje as well as the granule cells of the cerebellum, which is responsible for the development of ataxia in this case. And it usually presents in the early childhood. That's the reason the age of our patient of the ataxia telangiectasia is a three-year-old boy with the neurological symptoms like cerebellar ataxia with eventual wheelchair confinement. So because it is progressively deteriorating and ataxia generally starts from like uh, late uh, 24 months and it is more prominent by the age of three years. That's the reason it's typical presentation in the early childhood. So there will be a telangiectasia of the face as well as conjunctiva. So cerebellar ataxia plus telangiectasia of the face and the conjunctiva plus various immune deficiencies. So this various immune deficiencies leads to recurrent respiratory infections. 
So the triad of these things you, you have to see because it's mainly involving uh, the neurologic vascular immune system. So neurologic cerebellar ataxia plus vascular like telangiectasia of the face as well as conjunctiva plus immune, various immunodeficiencies which more prominently presents with uh, recurrent respiratory infections. So this is what you need to know about the clinical manifestations for the ataxia telangiectasia. And what are the complications? There is a very high degree of predisposition to developing cancers, especially breast lymphoma and leukemia. Very high risk of developing cancers, typically of the breast, lymphoma and leukemia. And the lymphomas and leukemias are more commonly present at a pediatric group. Very rarely the breast one. And lab findings are evident with the increased alpha fetoprotein levels. And uh, treatment, the first line of therapy with uh, vitamin E combined with the folic acid supplementation because it is an antioxidant, the vitamin E plus folic acid supplementation. This is the first line of therapy and uh, avoid radiation when possible and when most patients in this case do not live past 25 years or many die much earlier. Like maximum age I'm talking about 25 years, but majority they die by like 14, 15, something like that. That's the reason I said like, you know, breast cancers are very rare are mainly seen if the patient survives by the age of 25. So that's the reason lymphomas and leukemias are more commonly present by the early age. That's approximately by the 24 months. So this is the case of ataxia telangiectasia.